Hey guys, welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. Today, we're here in the Rebuild Rescue hangar. We're working on the 401. Last time you saw that we got these wings off the 401, finally. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> It took us forever and it really took us like a long while because we wanted to be careful with the way we were doing it and get them off the right way. So before we ship this airplane out and get the avionics done, get the paintwork done and get the interior done, we have to make a safe mount for it. Joe and I have spent hours and hours getting this mount ready to ship this airplane off all around the country. Take a look. So this is the first time that Harrison came in the hangar because uh, he hasn't been here while we've been, we've been filming uh, getting these wings off. And what do you think? Dude, this is wild. Isn't it? Yeah, it's weird seeing it like sitting this low. <laughs> Today we're trying to figure out how we're going to support this on top of the trailer. We're going to do it from the sparse here, but we have to do it in such a way that it doesn't damage this bar. So um, it's, a, it's another challenge. I mean, I don't know how many people have hauled, you know, hauled airplanes like this before, but this is gonna have to be like supported really well because it's gonna be going all over the place like this. And uh, you know, we obviously don't wanna damage anything, so. I wanted to take a minute today and introduce today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Look guys, the aviation industry is booming right now. And as a result, costs have skyrocketed. And even if you manage to get your hands on your dream plane, you may be looking at thousands of dollars of additional cost every single year. With all this in mind, not to mention fuel prices swinging back and forth, making sound financial decisions are that much more important. Look, we're not investment gurus, but I can tell you the past couple years, things have been interesting in the market. With inflation still hovering at a high level, many experts believe the worst is yet to come. As a result, many investors are moving towards real assets, physical things whose value is less likely to fluctuate when stocks fluctuate. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but the ultra rich have nearly doubled their spending this year in one particular asset, fine works of art. I know it sounds odd, but think about it. The law of supply and demand, they aren't exactly making any more Picassos, but the demand has remained steady for centuries. And the art market has been tactically used as an instrument to protect wealth and defend against inflation for generations. In fact, contemporary art, the kind I'll show you how to invest in, has shown price appreciation over 17% when inflation is this high. This is all according to the MW All Art Index. Not just when inflation is high, but historically contemporary art has had underrated performance as an asset class. When compared to the index of the top 500 companies on the stock market, contemporary art has outpaced it by a whopping 131% over the last 26 years. Now, Look guys, I was once like you guys. I had no idea art could be such a financial asset, but now I'm excited to be partnering with Masterworks. This platform qualifies our paintings with the SEC, turning legendary works of art into an investment for a fraction of the full price. Like the ultra rich, you can buy a percentage of a work of art that normally none of us could afford. Masterworks has had a total of eight exits and five of them this year alone. Their last three exits delivered 13.9%, 17.8%, and 21.5% net returns. And that is a great return, guys. As a result, Masterworks has had to acquire and release more art on their platform to meet the demand. And there's a wait list. But you can skip that wait list by clicking the link right down below in the description. Well, we got our brackets 
drilled out to fit the wing spars. Put four bolts in the rear, nice and solid. Two bolts up front. I'm thinking that'll support the mounts there. And all I have to do is make the attach points from there to the trailer and we should be good to go. If you haven't noticed, I'm enjoying my Rebuild Rescue coffee. Don't forget to check it out. Quite tasty. So these will be the two support brackets that come down from the top of the wing spars and then down into the frame. And we'll be able to lower the airplane up and down just a bit, maybe about eight inches or so. But the way we have it set up is this will actually slide down into two collars that'll then touch the ground and it's gonna have a lot of support in it. So there'll actually be three of these, uh, you know, coming down from the airplane. So it's a ton of work. Joe's been like working his butt off and getting these, he had so many days into cutting these and measuring and figuring out a way that we can mount that to the airplane. You know, one of the biggest problems that we have, we're bolting on to the, you know, the wing structure, to the wing spars, which is like the most important part of that airplane. Last thing we want is taking this thing, you know, somewhere across the country and something happening to it. So, so it's been a lot of work. It may look quick on film, but it's taken a ton of hours just to get this thing mounted safely. I think that's gonna stay together pretty good. What do you think? I think we're golden. <laughs> well, at least that one joint. I don't know about the rest of them, but. Makes it look like we kind of know what we're doing. No, I don't know. I'd go that I wouldn't go that far. I think it's still hot. So I think the next thing we're going to do, we have this one built for on the right side. We got to build the one for the left side because we're going to have to get it centered. And both of them are pretty much just going to have to sit level on top of these mounts. And then after they're centered, we'll go ahead and add the little brackets that these will fit down into. Now, the airplane's only going to be able to raise up and down, probably about another 10 inches, but that way it can be on the ground. These, it's extra support without the pneumatic tire on the ground. I just feel like it's a lot safer. We may even take a little foot, make like a little foot for that, so we can bolt this down to the trailer for when we're moving it, because if we're hauling this thing all over the country, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's gonna... Yeah, it's going to be a little nerve-wracking yeah. if it's bouncing around. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I just, I, I, don't, I don't want it falling off of it. I mean, that would be like really bad. All right, well, let's get the other side welded up.
All right, so we got all these uprights all secure on here. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying it's the best welding job I've ever done, but, but it looks pretty good. Hopefully it's strong enough to hold it up. It's only about, I think a thousand or 1200 pounds, you know, the, uh, the fuselage here. So uh, I, I believe Joe and I are kind of like overkilling it here, but I'd rather have it overbuilt than underbuilt. Joe was over here talking about how bad my welds are. So what, what do you guys think? How does that weld look? Of course, I am showing you the best weld I have on the whole thing, because if you look at some of these other ones, maybe not as nice looking as that one, but it is actually tough to weld this half inch plate steel into this eighth inch uh, square tube. So, but I think it is strong enough. I don't think it's gonna break and we're not done yet because we have another structure we're gonna put in the center there. I, I think it's gonna work really well. Side number two is all put together. So just like the other side, the only thing left is to sleeve it. But as of now, the 401 is pretty much completely supported by those three uprights on both sides. So before we get started on the 401, I wanted to give you guys another update on the TB20. So we're really excited about getting the TB20 up in the air doing some missions with it, but we had to make sure that we replaced this glass. We did find a crack in it, and we actually found uh, two problems with the avionics. We're waiting for the avionics shop to have the scheduled time to get those fixed and to get this up to par before we're doing missions with it. But we do get the glass in. We actually went with the more expensive, harder to install, thicker glass. The installation is like 50% done. This glass can actually be really tough to put in. It doesn't always fit just right, but it's coming out good. It's gonna be brand new. That's the way we want it. We can't wait to take this thing on a mission and we can't wait for you guys to join us on its first mission. But I'll tell you what guys, these airplanes, like it's a lot different than a car, a truck or a boat or a motorcycle. You're up in the air. There's so much more responsibility. Everything has to be done 10 times more stringently, 10 times more carefully. Not only do certified folks work on everything here, they inspect it, and you know what? We go back and we inspect it one, two, sometimes three times. So it takes a lot of time, but this thing's gonna be beautiful. I, I can't wait till it's completely ready to go. You know, after sitting for that many years, you know, we're bound to find some issues with it here and there, but we're not gonna fly this thing all over the country and definitely not gonna take people in the airplane until it is 1,000% Perfect. So other than adding a couple things to the trailer yet, the trailer is completely ready to go to have the 401 bolted down to it, safe and secure, and it can roll around anybody's shop or up on a trailer and off a trailer so this thing can get worked on. I know this isn't the normal way that you would work on an airplane, but we want to have this done by Oshkosh 23, so we just have to keep on moving. So while me and Joe were building the mounts for the trailer to safely get the 401 mounted to it, Mike came down from Mr. Dent Recon and helped us to clean out the interior.
Hey Mike, how's it going? Pretty good, man. Oh man, it looks like you got a good bit of that cleaned up already. Yeah, yeah I got so, most of it backed out, started wiping everything down, down in the floor. Um, just cleaning up pretty good. Awesome. It's pretty dirty, yeah. but. Yeah, we gotta get, so we're like kind of running out of time because we gotta get everything really cleaned up because we're gonna put this on a trailer and go all the way to Georgia. Right on. Um, and they're gonna be working, doing like a ton of work in here. So I wanna get it as clean as possible. So, you know, so they have a really good platform. I mean, right, right. you know, it's gonna go from there. It's gonna go get the interior done. And then it's also gonna get painted like the whole airplane. So the, so the fuselage is gonna be like completely done. If you look at this, like looking inside this airplane, like if you've never seen one like this, it looks pretty scary. Oh yeah. <laughs> it looks oh yeah. Scary. Uh but it's it's just like anything else, you know, uh one piece, one part at a time. And uh, you know, and it, it's gonna go back together. So but Mike's here from my shop. He actually runs our recon facility there. He is an awesome detailer, he knows his cleaning. Uh we brought some extra tools and brushes for him to use, and uh this thing is going to be spotless when he's done. Oh yeah, this thing's gonna clean up real nice. I'm excited, I'm excited for it, awesome. Just when we thought, you know, we had all the birds' nests out of the uh, birdhouse here. Birdhouse being the 401. We found another one way inside the dash with no access from our inside that we could get to. So, got one access that we gotta reach way up in yeah. there. And Mike being the trooper that he is, <laughs> He's taking it. it, taking it in the armpit and everywhere <laughs> else. I can't hold the nest and get my hand out. But uh, I mean, the debris is just mm. what was surrounding the nest. There's still an actual nest <sighs> sitting up in there that we're trying to get out of there. There's still so much up in there. Oh. That was all down my shirt. <laughs> Mike, it almost sounds like you tasted a little bit of that one. Oh, uh, 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 bird nest is probably my third favorite food. Welcome to Rebuild Rescue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get the rest of this cleaned out. The only thing we really gotta get cleaned on the 401 is this tail area right here and the inside of the tail. Now we don't have Joe here to crawl into the tail, so I'm gonna try to fit myself. I think I can fit in there? Am I actually gonna fit in or am I gonna get like stuck in the tail? So if you, you guys can see in here, we got plenty of dirt down inside here yet. So we want to get this out, you know, at the avionics shop, they're going to be crawling around in the tail, getting some of this stuff hooked up, running wires. We want it as clean as possible. We did inspect it for corrosion. There's no corrosion through here, but there's a lot of dirt yet. And I'll tell you, those birds just get in the smallest places. I mean, I guess when they have like years and years to do it, you know, they, they just kind of get everywhere. But if you guys look in there, 
you can see how there is a good bit of dirt back in there yet. So we're going to get some air in there. We're going to get uh, the vacuum in there. We just want to get this as cleaned out as possible. Maybe get some brushes up there and get this cleaned out. So although that makes like a huge mess using the drill brush, it makes short work of getting this thing as clean as possible. Now, I'm not going to go over the whole inside of the plane, you know, showing you all of the, the cleaning and the drill brushing and stuff like that. But I did want to get this panel done so you guys would get to see the lengths that we go to to make sure A, the corro there's no corrosion and B, and also just to get this all cleaned up, we're going to zinc chromate this then. It keeps it from getting corroded and it, it really adheres to aluminum really well. So we're going to get this all cleaned up. We're going to tape this off. We'll zinc chromate it. You guys will get to see pretty much how the whole airplane is going to look. We will crawl inside this whole tail. We'll do the same thing. We're going to get the drill brush in there. We're going to get some other specific brushes, clean every single nook and cranny out, check for corrosion. We'll remove the corrosion and or repair it. However, we haven't seen any corrosion in this. Um, and then we'll zinc chromate it. Now, only some parts of an airplane are zinc chromated. You're not gonna see the whole thing being zinc chromated, but a lot of this 401 is gonna get that because we all want it as good as possible and we're, gonna, we're willing to spend the extra time to make it that way. This stuff makes such a mess. Yeah, so we're basically just using a soap solution with a non-corrosive degreaser, uh, biodegradable on here, and it's watered down a good bit because we don't want anything on here that can corrode and or get places where we don't want it. I don't know how good this looks on camera, but I can tell you in person, this is like, it's like a huge difference. I mean, the only thing we got here is you can see this white stuff here. This white stuff is literally overspray. When we paint it, because all this stuff's going to be a part, it's going to get full paint. Like, nobody does that. Like, well, no sane people do that, but anyway.
So this is zinc chromate. So when you see the green primer on pretty much any airplane and or boat, zinc chromate is what you're seeing. It's a really good primer. It helps with corrosion. It adheres to aluminum really well. So we're just going to tape this off. We're just going to give this a light coat so I can show you guys what most of this is going to look like once we're finished and before it gets the final paint job. Now we did notice a number of you had commented when we talk about painting the airplane that it should stay, it, it should keep the same paint job. This fuselage is, it, it's not bad. The paint's not bad on it. It's not new, obviously. There's a couple people that stopped by the hangar here and they talked about we should get the new wings, paint them to match the old paint job because this airplane, this 401 at this point is iconic and it should keep the same paint job. But I still think a bright red, black, silver, white, paint job so it really stands out so people know when it's there for a mission when this airplane's there for a mission so they know what it is and I just also think it would look really badass so. I was thinking of maybe having a vote maybe we'll have three designs or something like that and you guys can pick out what you like so if you guys want to see that you know post on the comments you let me know what your thoughts are so at the end of the day, and I know you guys have heard me say this before, at the end of the day, you know, it's not just my project. I mean, you guys have time invested in this too. And obviously through the GoFundMe, there's a number of you who have donated towards this project. You know, so it's, I'm doing a lot of the work, but you guys, you guys got to make some decisions on this. Post something in the comments. Let me know. What do you guys want to do with it? I mean, personally, I'd love to see like a red and black all over paint job, but we could just buff, we could literally buff this and it looks that good and we could paint the wings to match. It would save us money and it would save us a ton of time. But that's up to you guys. Now normally we'd be in a paint booth when I'd be doing this or in a primer booth, but I'm just doing a small area. I just want to show you guys like what it would look like. that dry off not as fun smelling as croil no <laughs> no now this stuff does not smell good and honestly I should have a mask on but we were just touching some of this area up it's not much different than spray painting something at home now on a larger scale when we prime the whole uh, fuselage we'll have a larger gun and it'll be sprayed out of a, a high volume low pressure gun because I'm not going to use a can to paint everything, but I can tell you some of the interior components here, we're going to crawl in here, we're going to clean it up the same way we did here with a drill brush, with some cleaner, with some towels, some air, and it's just literally to clean this tail out, it'll take a day. It'll take eight hours to clean this tail out the correct way, getting every nook and cranny, making sure nothing's there to capture moisture to create corrosion, cleaning it out, wiping it down, wiping it down with thinner, and then guess what? with a mask, plenty of lights, we're gonna be crawling around in this tail. This whole tail is gonna be zinc chromated. It's not that way from the factory, but we want it as good as possible. I can tell you now, this here, this is not gonna corrode. It is not gonna have any issues for at least as long as I'm here on this earth and most of you guys too. So, uh, you know, that's why we wanna do it. I wanted to show you guys what you can expect, what it's gonna look like. I can't wait till this whole airplane's done like that. Let's take this over to the vapor honing machine and let's see what we can do to clean this up. This is the plate that goes over top of here. This is the way it used to look. So if you look here, this is the way this used to look. This is the way it looks now.
guys can't tell by the amount of dirt that we have inside our vapor honing machine, we've been using this thing like crazy. But look at that panel. Brand new, ready to go. Throw some primer on there, it's perfect. So this is how this plate should look. A little bit of time in the vapor honing machine, a tiny bit of zinc chromate, and it's brand new again. Hey, Dimitri, what's happening? How are you, buddy? <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. I thought I'd stop over and see if we could use your computer system to get the AD list for 81 Alpha Delta. I already printed them for you. Oh, you already printed them? I did. Yes. I did. So this is Alpha Delta. It's airframe, two engines, two props. So cool. And then this so these is... are all the things that could have an AD on, or could have an AD uh, attached to the airframe that we have to review to rebuild the logs. Correct. Wow, that's like a pretty big stack of uh, stuff there. Yeah, well, hopefully a lot of it's been done. And yeah. a lot of times, some of this doesn't apply any longer. It's been superseded. Right, so. so we have to go over the whole thing and see what was done based on that other paperwork that we have. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the paperwork for the top secret project. <laughs> the top secret project <laughs> that that you guys are going to, that we're going to help with, but you guys are going to do here at the shop. Yes, correct. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about that. As are we. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. You are welcome. Well, I'm going to head back over here to the hangar because uh, we got a ton of work to do today. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. All right. So if you guys remember the AD list that we had found in the file cabinet over in Sam's hangar, one of the folders I found was this folder right here which is 81 Alpha Delta. This is the one we found that really kind of helps us recover the logbooks because it has the ADs listed from 1969 to 2005. It has the Hobbs meter. We have the original Hobbs meter from the airplane. So we know the hours of different ADs that were done. Now, some of these ADs are not even applicable anymore because some of the uh, avionics and stuff will be changed and, and stuff like that. And Really, we're gonna go over every single AD, even though we have record of them, because the aircraft sat for so long and we wanna be up to date, we also wanna make sure that nothing changed because it sat for so long outside. That is the list, which is like five, four pages long. The new list that we got from Brandywine Aviation and Maintenance, which pulls right from the FAA database, is a few more pages long. This is front and back. I think there's 30 some for the airframe, which isn't so bad considering, but the engines, the engines have pages upon pages of ADs. The nice thing is the engines that we bought for the 401 over in Holland, this is all done. Everything's up to date. One had an IRAN, which is, you know, replacing as necessary. Basically, the whole engine was going over. It's got log books that notate all these ADs. So that makes that engine good. We don't have to go over it. We have to bring it up to date. It is, it is a couple years old, but nothing like this list. And the other engine, the right side engine, that one is completely fresh with a brand new overhaul. Again, it's a few years old. A couple ADs we'll have to look at. It's gonna make things much more simple. We're so lucky to have found that, that whole pile of parts. But, uh, and the propellers the same way. The propellers had some ADs on them. The ones that we bought are all fresh, all overhauled, an updated AD list. It's got like two or three years that we're gonna to have to double check and make sure no new ADs came out in that time period. But I think we're gonna be okay. Really, you know, by finding that deal and getting those parts, it made this project go from a few hundred thousand dollars cost to maybe a little over a hundred thousand dollars a cost. So we're gonna start going through these ADs as we're working on the airplane, as we're installing things, as we're putting them back together. Yes, yeah, so we got a lot of work to do, but we have it right here, everything we need. 
see if there's any ADs that says about landing gear. Don't get nails in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get nails in your tires. That's the uh, for number one AD on here. No nails in tires. Now the the big and the biggest ones we have here is. Uh, you know, talking about those uh, wing spars and the new wings, brand new, completely rebuilt wing spar modification done. Real excited to get this done. Can't you tell I'm so excited? So while Joe's up top, up under the hood there, pulling some of the components out and, and getting ready to clean up some of the corrosion, I thought I'd get underneath here and we'd start removing this gear. So this whole assembly is, is pretty complex. There's like all kinds of stuff going on in here. There's multiple pickup points that we have to loosen up so we can get this assembly out of here because we want to go ahead and vapor hone, blast all this paint off of here and completely rebuild this whole set up here. If you look at the top part of this strut here and you look at the rust that's on it, it's more surface rust. It's not real critical, but it'd be nice to get that all cleaned up. You can see this was like a pretty big place for the birds to come hang out for some reason. I guess they had a nice perch up above there, but still some bird crap left in here to get cleaned out yet. I don't think I'll be sad if I never see anything coated with bird poop again. We also want to clean up all of this old stuff. We want to put a new coating of paint in here to make sure that there's no corrosion and to make sure if, if there is any corrosion that we get it cleaned up. And we also want to make sure it doesn't corrode in the future. And we want it to look pretty. And this green paint here doesn't look so pretty. So we're going to get this all cleaned up and get this thing out of here. So Joe and I have got a lot of stuff done on the 401. We're almost ready to where we can load this thing up on a trailer and get it down to Georgia and get these avionics done. We're gonna get all of the corrosion cleaned up underneath here. We're gonna get it all zinc chromated. We're gonna pull the landing gear out and we're gonna show you guys that on the next episode of the 401. Guys, thank you so much for coming along. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with us here on Rebuild Rescue. Make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notifications, Ring that bell. Thank you so much.